Well, lots to talk about tonight. Is this a visionary rail budget? Is this going to set the tone for the general budget, which is just two days away? Or is it a budget that's high on rhetoric with very little uh, that's really shown on how the government will be able to deliver on all the promises that it has made? Joining us tonight, we have a very good panel this evening. We have Mr. N.K. Singh, a former uh, member of the Rajya Sabha and member of the BJP. Virapa Moili, Lok Sabha MP of the Congress Party and also former minister. Shugota Roy, Lok Sabha MP of the Trinamool Congress is with us tonight. Economist Ajit Rana Day joins us from Mumbai. Satish Mohan Vesh, the former GM of Northern Railways and member of the Khanna Committee on Rail Safety and MK Venu, the executive editor of the Amarujala Group. Mr. Shagota Roy, let me ask you first because the Trinamool Congress's reaction uh, to the railway budget today really stood out apart from all the other opposition that we saw, not only in terms of the angry, almost violent protests we saw in Parliament, uh, but also Mamta Banerjee's reaction. She said, we're not beggars. We'll give the tra one train that West Bengal has been allotted back to them. It seemed to be a bit of a churlish reaction, uh, a bit of an overreaction, Mr. Roy. Not at all. You see, firstly, the Tridamul Congress had already protested against the fare hike, which is going to fetch the railways 8,000 crores. Now, that is wholly a burden on the common people. The minister has not announced any relief on that count. The whole budget speech of the railway minister was a move to justify entry of private parties, foreign direct investment into the railway sector, citing lack of funds for the railway as a whole. We are opposed to this approach that FDI private public partnership in the name of that Adani's and Ambani's would get into the railway system. We are opposed to that. Secondly, Bengal does not have to beg for railway projects from the center. There are several ongoing projects. Very little money has been given to the ongoing projects. I'll mention particularly the metro railway projects in and around Calcutta. Very little money has been given for that. As far as new trains are concerned, you will see that the out of the large number of new trains of all types, uh, new trains of all types, Jansadharan train, AC express train, premium train, express train, and uh, passenger train, menu services, demo services, this would amount to a total of say 50, 60 trains. Yes, Out of that only of one train has been given to Bengal. You must remember that Calcutta is the headquarter of three railways, Eastern Railway, Southeastern Railway and the Metro Railways. If this crucial Eastern state is neglected, similar neglect has been shown to Bihar also, to Odisha also. As a whole, the whole of Eastern okay. India has been so, neglected. So you're saying that so there, one been, is there are two important the, in points the, you make, Mr. Shugata Roy. One is that you believe that key states have been neglected in the budget. And two, uh, about the issue of privatization and entry of private parties. I'd like to take that question to Mr. N.K. Singh. That Mr. Singh, uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, you, you see very strong reactions when it comes to the issue of privatization in many sectors in this country. Uh, and the BJP was one that reacted very strongly, for instance, to uh, FDI and multi-brand retail. It is the same BJP today uh, that is talking about bringing in private players to uh, to revamp the railways. Uh, Not only how would private, you, FDI also. And FDI. So how would you address the concerns? Because in the past, the, the public-private partnership for the Indian railways, for instance, hasn't really worked. What's the guarantee it will work now? Well, I think that, uh, let me go back to some of the core issues which were raised. First, I think let's admit the fact that the railways are in a financial collapse. Uh, the operating, gross operating ratio, which was at one stage a healthy 7 to 6%, progressively deteriorated to a... All right, I think we've lost that line with Mr. Singh. Uh, we'll just try and, uh, try and get that back. Uh, Mr. Moyli, I just wanted to come to you uh, because, you know, one of the things that really stood out in Mr. Gauda's speech today was the fact 
that most of the projects that the UPA government, for instance, had announced during its la uh, tenure, t uh, tenure haven't gotten off. And that's a very telling statistic that only one pr you know, project is off the mark and the rest, you know, you've announced them. Uh, but what has happened to those projects, Mr. Moili? You know, the, all those facts are not correct. You know, the, he has just reeled out some facts, but I don't know from where. But, you know, look at the way, you know, they pronounce a uh, lot of things here. Of course, it is popularly said now, you know, after particularly uh, Mr. Gowda announced his budget, that, you know, the, it is, uh, uh, you know, the uh, 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 Mr. Narendra Modi's uh, Express and, you know, Sadhananda Gowda's Gadi. Gadi means a cart. You know, this is a kind of a budget which he has presented. I think there is a, there has been a good opportunity for the BJP government to project uh, what they wanted because to re really to respond to the aspirational uh, 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 the approach of uh, Mr. Modi. And, but you know because uh, many a time this uh, in, the, in a, any given government whether it is UP and NDA is always held by uh, allies. As a result many of the programs which is intended by the Prime Minister or the particular party is not responded to. But here, you know, it, uh, they had an opportunity. I think that opportunity is totally lost. There have been three big, big uh, ticket projects, you know, in the UPA government and, you know, particularly two locomotive factories in Bihar, elevated rail corridor in Mara Maharashtra, freight corridor projects which have already been delayed. You know, they do not get any a priority whatsoever. Bullet trains, Mumbai, Ahmedabad, you know, it cannot be achievable because what is provided is 100 crores. But one thing must be said, you know, they said about the, uh, the uh, foreign direct investment, the privatization, it's a good talk, you know, is it achievable? You all no, know that, you know, you unless there Mr. is a structural Moyli, remark. Mr. Moyli, the, the railway minister has said that only one of the 99 new line projects that were worth 60,000 crores uh, in the last 10 years was actually implemented. Are you saying that that's a lie? That was my original question because you said that, he's just uh, No, no, yeah, that's that not up. correct. It is not implemented. It is not true completed. and we have some other projects. So we, <coughs> it's not the time to reel out those facts. But, you know, that is totally wrong. I think, you know, it is only a political statement. Okay. I don't think, you know, any minister uh, in any given government, you know, can give a political statement through a, a budget, budget, budget estimate. That is why I say it is more of a lecture, more of an essay than a real financial budget. It would be quite something if a minister would have to say it, uh, the, that on the floor of the house and not have his facts right. But Mr. N.K. Singh, I'm sorry we lost the line with you, Mr. Singh. Earlier, you, you were making the point on, on privatization and why, uh, you know, it, it just you know, there is such a strong reaction to the word privatization, especially for the railways. Let me say this, that uh, if you look at the entire history of Indian railways, I think three important facts face you starkly. First and foremost, that progressively railway finances have gone from bad to worse. The operating ratio has deteriorated from 7 to 6 percent to what is now an abysmal 94 percent, which means roughly only 4.5 percent is available for any railway investment. We need to dramatically improve railway finances. Second, over the years, the railway portfolio has become exceedingly extended. Large number of projects being announced every year to meet regional aspirations or provincial aspirations for which there is absolutely no money. So I think that the entire railway portfolio needed a fundamental restructuring. Third and foremost, based on best international practice, I think that we need to in inject competitive efficiency in the railway sector. And I think that the discussions in relation to bringing in public-private partnership, including on FDI, is, is to foster competitive efficiency and to improve the productivity apart from enhancing the resources of a sector which is completely cash-strapped. I do not subscribe that the, pro or the protests against this very modest increase in railway fare. I mean, do we realize that, for instance, per annum, the passenger fare is bears a loss of 28,000 crore and there was a cross subsidy between freight and the passenger which had fostered the inefficiency of the Indian railways for very long. I think this budget in my view is a credible attempt 
to improve upon the distortionary policies which have for long bedeviled railway finances, which have really hurt the quality of services which are available and which have hurt railway becoming a true engine of economic growth in this okay, country. Let me just get quick comments from, uh, from, from the rest of the panel before I get into some more detail on, on the points that you made. One, uh, Mr. Ranade, would you agree with N.K. Singh that do you believe that this budget, by talking about privatization, uh, is, is talking about competitive efficiency and bringing the railways, you know, f financially at least back on track. Do you believe that that's what's going to happen or it's not going to be easy also to attract private players in this business? Yeah, Nidhi, the railways is a very crucial infrastructure in India. And like Mr. Singh said, cumulatively, we have now got a backlog of a huge, huge uh, backlog of investments that need to be made. One estimate is 14 lakh crores. Now, this is simply not going to come from railway's own savings, which is about just about 10, 15,000 crores per year, or borrowing, or from the planning, you know, the plan, the plan funds. So there is just, you know, the, the sheer need for modernization, safety systems, etc., will need uh, injection of outside funds, namely from private parties, which we started it, by the way, in 2006, and also from foreign uh, flows. Also remember that India is a very standout case. Uh, the world over, the, the mix of freight between railways and roadways is in favor of railways because it's more efficient, energy efficient, and environmentally more friendly. But in India, almost 80% of the freight travels on roads. And yeah. this used to be, so it's 80-20 used to be a ratio 90-10 in favor of uh, rail, rail. So even to make a marginal improvement, we need uh, massive investments uh, in the infrastructure railways. I mean, uh, for example, just to give an example of this uh, passenger fares that Mr. Singh referred to, uh, the Indian railways ferry something like 6 billion passenger trips per year, 6 or 7 billion. And the total passenger collection is about 440 billion. So one passenger trip is less than 70 rupees. Surely if that 70 rupees goes to 75 rupees, uh, that will be a huge improvement in the passenger fare collection. But this has to be done, of course, in a calibrated manner. But clearly, the railway finances need ma a big fix. And okay. I think and uh, there is no alternative. Budget, you clearly feel that this budget has the vision to do that. So, Mr. Vesh, having run the railways yourself, what did you think then of the budget today? No, all the things said are very nice. and uh, But they are all small. Small. See, import small. The important thing in the railways is capacity. And uh, the capacity required is tremendous. For example, if you want 8% growth, then the capacity has to grow at 10% per year. By 2030, it will have to be six times the present. Even to imagine how you can make the present freight capacity six times is something worth understanding. That is one thing. The other thing not brought out is that our freight charges are the highest in the world. They are three to four times China's, and uh, they are uh, they are um, uh, causing a certain uh, uh, problem in the entire country. There is no reason for railways to be allowed to charge anything more than cost plus 10, 20, 30 percent. They are charging cost plus 200 percent. So what I mean to say is that things are at the moment somewhat topsy turvy. This needs to change. And only if it changes will the investments go in the right direction. But there are many positives. The railway has a great uh, what land What do you bank. think of privatization? Getting privatization private is excellent. In fact, I would recommend that a World Bank team, an Asian bank team, continuously work in railways to tell us what we should do. Because our own expertise is nowhere near what they have. And you believe that a privatization and foreign direct investment we can turn things yes, around? Yes, it can. Um, we'll have to make sure that they get due return. You see, what happens is we, we invite them, but then we keep on putting obstacles and the red tape and the lack of return, yeah. they go away. A person comes to make money. He doesn't come for fun. So we have to ensure adequate return. Okay, I think you've made some very important points. I'm going to take that back to the TMC in just a moment, but uh, Venu, just get come in on this. Uh, one of the things, though, that I do want to ask Mr. N.K. Singh as well, is that, okay, you talk about these wonderful things like the bullet train yeah. or the high-speed trains, but, you know, where is that money going to come from? Is it entirely going to come from FDI, private investment? Are you going to be able to raise that kind of money? Are these just big promises on paper? 
Yeah, Nidhi, I, I personally feel bullet train, the document itself says a, a bullet project cost of a bullet train uh, would require 60,000 crore. Yeah. Now, uh, do, does India need to spend on bullet trains at this stage? Because if you, if you go around the world, many countries which had bullet trains, uh, they had it after their per capita incomes uh, exceeded, you know, four thousand, five thousand dollars. You know, uh, with the kind of poverty that we have in our country, with our per capita incomes at you know sixteen hundred uh, dollars or thereabout, uh, I think it's a bit early to talk about bullet trains. But the other project, the Golden uh, Diamond Quadrilateral, faster trains. You know, increasing the speed from one hundred twenty uh, to about one hundred eighty uh, kilometers. Two hundred. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that that is feasible, but even that. Will require investments of uh, of the order you of twenty. change the tracks. Yeah, you twenty lakh crore. Everything. You know, twenty lakh crore, uh, as Ranadi was saying. Now, uh, that vision. I, I mean, this budget does give you a peek into if you manage to sp uh, raise that kind of money, you could have a GDP kicker of uh, close to a percentage uh, every year uh, over the next five, seven, ten years. But to raise that money. Uh, I was talking to Mr. Vesh, railway accounting has to be more transparent. Today, railway accounting is on the basis of some income and expenditure and some surplus they derive. Uh, there is no proper costing. I was told that uh, the pension fund is also not very uh, transparent whether they are providing for it or not. So you have to move to a normal accounting system which other PSUs do. I am not saying that you should privatize the railway at this stage. But even if you make it like other PSUs, corporatize it or uh, run it like other PSUs with government control. That itself, and if the railways project their uh, true assets, their land values, etc., which is runs into several lakh crores, you know, uh, alongside the track, then that will attract uh, a lot of investors, private as well as foreign, and you could uh, allow private participation in other peripheral activities, you know, in tracks or in you know, in such. They're not going to yeah. be allowed in op uh, in actual yeah, operations. Yeah, no, not in the core yeah. operations. Yeah. But in other, in factories, uh, in coach factories, etc., you can allow private participation. They, you you can't treat private. Uh, Part of private parties as pariahs uh, in this in today's world of but, you know, uh, globalization. Let, let, let me just ask the Congress though that Mr. Moyli, would you at least admit that this government has had the nerve to present a budget that is not out and out populist? It takes some nerve to do that politically, and I, I suppose you can only do it when you have the kind of numbers that the NDA does. Now, if you look at rail, rail budgets in the past, and I think we all agree on this, they've been highly populist, often portfolios held with key allies who end up giving... I mean, today Mr. Shugotha Roy is complaining about one train to West Bengal. Uh, I think in the past there have been a fair number of trains to Bengal when Mamta Banerjee was railway minister and to Bihar when you had a ministers from there. So, Mr. Moli, would you say that it does take some kind of you know, political will to move away from those kind of populist budgets? Uh, we, we just thought that, you know, the... They will definitely, you know, will not be enamored by the populist budget, but ultimately they landed into that. <laughs> you know, if you go through the tenor of the entire budget, you know, they ultimately landed into that. Particularly, I am just telling you, talk about the FTI, talk about the reforms, many of these things. What is the structure you have? Indian Railway, Indian Railway, you know, is a commercial undertaking managed by them. You know, I think, uh, you know, unless you go for a total rest structural reform. You know, we cannot go that. That is why the pre previous uh, UPA government, you know, constituted a committee under Mr. Sam Petroda. He gave a report and, you know, that report has suggested many structural reforms and, you know, that uh, unfortunately that Petroda committee recommendations do not, all right, you don't mention Petroda, but at least, you know, some of the reforms of the organizational structuring and the empowerment uh, of the various uh, bodies should have been taken, speeding up the decision making process, but none of these things are found. Then how do you expect the, how do you expect the PPP project and the, uh, the FTI projects to come? Even on the safety measures, there was a committee appointed under uh, Mr. Anil Kakodgar and he gave a five-year plan. And you know, whatever the amount, but at least, if, even if you don't mention because you are, the UPA becomes untouchable to you, at least the reform measures you should think. Unless there is a reform measure, and structural change, I don't think, you know, any of the dream or any of the, uh, any of the reforms which is su supposed to have been suggested by Mr. Modi can be implemented. Okay, it doesn't percolate in the budget. You're saying there's no structural change. Mr. Vesh wanted to come in on that. Yes, I, I would like to say that <coughs> these reports in the end have said lakhs of crores are required. Now, they have not shown from where these lakhs of crores will come. Exactly. That is one point. The second point is about about the semi-high speed trains for which they have said the entire quadrilateral will run. According to me, that is second priority. The first priority is 
to convert all trains to EMU that is the electrical multiple unit stock that is the way trains are run all over the world that is they have uh, train sets with motors every alternate coach minimum effect on track maximum acceleration maximum deceleration and if you use those train sets Delhi Bombay and Delhi Calcutta can be overnight with the present track and present speeds and you're saying that should have been the priority that is the rather first than priority. okay. So I'll take that to Mr. N.K. Saying that Mr. Singh, uh, as as N.K. Venu was also saying, Hello. maybe we're jumping May the gun with the bullet trains speed. and the high speed trains. And I mean, you know, that's all wonderful, but that's not what India needs right now. So perhaps I think that the Venu uh, has somewhat overlooked the fact that there is an aspirational element in this, and I think that to an average Indian, a bullet train is really a leapfrogging into a different aspirational orbit. And I think that the finances for a bullet train would need to be found innovatively and imaginatively by making public-private partnership genuinely workable. And I think there, are, there is enough international appetite and enough international funding which would be available for the kind of bullet trains which have been talked about. But where I agree with Vinu is that there is one committee which has not been talked about. And you know, you know the person who gave uh, a, a far-reaching report on transparency on accounting procedures of railways was a Rakesh Mohan committee report, which he did quite some time ago. Many of those recommendations, I think, are the forward path into putting railway accounts on a more transparent footing. And I'd like to react to one particular point which was made by one of the panelists, that the freights in India are perhaps the highest in the world. Why is that so? It is so because I think the, the cross subsidy which exists between, uh, r between the freight subsidizing the, the low passenger fare mm -hmm. and keeping passenger fares at what is historically low is the basic distortion of why you have a peculiar phenomena that steel plant equipments are traveling by road and people are traveling by train, a converse of what common sense and economics would suggest. I would finally say, Nidhi, that I know many more structural reforms are to be made. The fact of enticing private investment and public-private partnership is the beginning of deeper structural changes. And there is a hint contained in the budget when the functions of the railway itself are sought to be segregated between policy implementation and policy formulation. And I think this is, there is a hiatus which is being created, which is the beginning of wanting to do away with the conflict of interest. There's a triple conflict of interest right now in the railway board. The railway board formulates the policy. The railway board also provides the service. The railway board also becomes a monitor. I think that the, these triple yeah. functions need to be segregated to bringing in greater accountability. This budget is therefore, in my view, the beginning of deeper structural reforms, some of which we will see as the Modi okay, government begins so to that is your answer to Mr. Moyli's really criticism as well. Second. But Mr. Shugata Roy, you know, I, I'm sure you would concede that the railways are in a dire mess today and, uh, and, you know, are in desperate need of finances and desperately need to be turned around. So what is the Trinamool's solution to that, sir? No, let me first start by saying that you are constantly saying the word populist as if that's a very bad word. There is nothing wrong with populism. Every politician tries to please his electorate. If a West Bengal railway minister has given more projects to West Bengal, West Bengal is part of India. That project should be completed. If Bihar minister has given more projects to Bihar, then Bihar is part of India that should be completed. But the railway minister is saying that so many projects have not been completed and you've been repeating his statement. Now the answer is if so many projects are not completed, instead of completing those projects, why is he announcing brand new projects, diamond quadrilateral and bullet trains? So this is a blah blah blah. I have never heard a more visionless railway minister's speech. Notice it's bankrupt of ideas. Now let me tell you that you also, all electronic media journalists, you also say that why not increase fears? So the whole budget speech 
is an apology is finding out rationale for increasing fare look here we don't have funds we don't have funds for safety we can't raise freight charges because that will make railway freight unremunerative uh, uncompetitive so let us load the passenger burden the passenger with higher fare this is one logic secondly we have got so many projects to implement so how do you do it we have to invite private capital let us give more port connectivity programs to the adanis or ambanis or whoever so they let them come with the money otherwise go to the foreign companies they would come in in profitable lines they would take over the railway workshop that is a way of getting money these are not new ideas the railway no minister no has not right no please let way. me complete yeah, you make okay. me sit for 15 minutes so let we me complete with you, sir. so all Let's i am complete. saying no you started with me and then forgot about me no, all together no, haven't forgotten so <laughs> the only 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 point i want to make that is no idea of innovative financing how much the railway land could be made use of to collect money they have made no effort how much the railway property may be used for advertisements how the stations can be converted into world class stations and make money out of that you see any but mr roy any that's the problem we all want Japan, world class stations we want world class trains but you know we are not willing to pay a little yeah. bit more for that i, I mean it's something that arun jaitley no, said yesterday you? he made who a good point the, the, if you want to country, use the services no, no, pay this, for them there are plenty of people no, who no, travel no, by train that, who can that afford is, to that pay is more a typical that is a typical bjp electronic media capitalist view <laughs> that, that is, that is the first i've heard of that at least for ndtv thank you <laughs> that that is that is that is, the, the majority of the country is poor and is poor people who mostly travel on trains they over the almost 20 million people are traveling by trains every okay, day we, we, and most of them are poor make, sir. so we, you are going to pay more for the services Yes, we do. Please, then come to Mr. Ranaji. No, but now let me please. So let one me moment, please. Let, let me just, just get everybody in. So I am saying that okay. this railway budget is bankrupt, bereft of new ideas, no effort made to really find out innovative ways of financing, just creating a rationale for increasing railway fares, bringing in private parties like Adani's, bringing in. FBI. Okay, you have been very and clear with your views, sir. The, your the same, please, last point. Last yes, point, last yes. point. And this railway board, this is the worst bureaucracy in the world. They will not even let PPP work. They will not even work themselves. And there is no talk of actually reforming the railway bureaucracy, of making it more effective, making projects time bound so that okay. the timelines are not crossed. Okay, I think those crossed. are some important points that's, you made, especially about point. making projects Please. time bound and. Also completing the projects that are already you know announced and are there. I mean, yeah. Nidhi, Nidhi, one point I want to make. I, I, I wish this budget what, had what? had said something on uh, inefficiencies within the railway on reducing costs. You know, the, uh, we don't know. This is a point that uh, Arvind Kejriwal has been making uh, of late through his radio advertisements, and I think he's right. He, the railways have such a non-transparent costing system. Their public yeah. procurement. They are one of the biggest procurers. Again, non-transparent. So I have a feeling that they can reduce costs by 20% if they are more uh, transparent in the way they uh, implement projects. And if that is so, Absolutely. you can actually avoid increasing fares by 20%. So I think that part, there's nothing in the, in the budget about looking at costs, looking at public pro the procurement by railways, which is of a huge order. So I think that that focus is not there. Okay, I just want to get last comments from everyone to just look ahead for a moment to, to, to the general budget in a couple of days. Mr. Ranade, based on the budget that you've seen today, the railway budget, uh, do you think it's a sign of what kind of a general budget we are going to see then on, on, on Thursday by Mr. Jaitley? Yeah, Nidhi, but a quick comment on the, uh, the status of uh, railway finances. This is a unique business where it's a monopoly and all its sale is based on advanced payment for, you know, the payment is made first and then you undertake the journey or the freight. So in fact, it, it should ideally have negative working capital. And yet this is a business which uh, services 100 crore customers, but it's perennially starved of funds. So it's true that some of these ideas like cost cutting, uh, what Venu said, 
or sale of government uh, railway land, which uh, Mr. Roy said should be explored. But I think we have to go down the path of uh, unbundling and, and, and getting private sector to play a role in various parts of the railways. As far as indication to the general budget is concerned, certainly it shows you know, idea, this idea of FDI or you know, Wi-Fi, solar panels on platforms, modernization, pass more focus on railway stations, not just passenger uh, services or freight. If this is any indication, I think there will be some out of the box ideas in the general budget. So there's, uh, of course, the market has reacted very, uh, very strongly and violently, but I think the market has a uh, mind of its own. But there are some indications in this budget, like uh, Mr. Singh said about aspirational value of bullet train. The bullet train is 10 years away. But just mentioning it as one of the you know, aspirational thing is, is a good signal to give. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. Lots to talk about tomorrow as well as we look ahead to the general budget and what the expectations are uh, from this government on Thursday. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us tonight and giving us your perspective on the railway budget today. In fact, uh, there have been a number of measures uh, that were announced by the minister today for passengers in particular, a lot of amenities. It's going to be easier, we hope now, uh, to be able to get uh, your rail reservations, whether it's through post offices or on mobile phones. Also, I think uh, what a lot of people appreciated was the fact uh, that you'll see a 40% hike in spending on cleanliness in trains uh, and in stations. So we spoke to passengers today in Patna and New Delhi, many of them saying they're keeping their fingers crossed. They've heard these promises before. They actually want to see them implemented this time. <laughs> the Patna railway station perhaps defines what's wrong with the Indian railways. Dirty loose, garbage on platforms and equally dirty trains something that the new government's first rail budget has caught the attention of. The railway minister has promised several measures to clean up the Indian railways, quite literally. The minister has increased allocation for cleanliness by 40% over the previous year. Cleaning activities at 50 major stations will be outsourced to private agencies. The railways will also set up a separate housekeeping wing. Cooked, ready-to-eat meals, more hygienic in nature, will also be introduced in select trains. Passengers on long-distance trains like the Brahmaputra Mail, on which I am travelling in right now, say that while the rail minister's focus on cleanliness, on sanitation and on good food is very, very welcome, the situation at the moment is very, very bad and that the proof of the pudding lies in the implementation of these promises being made in the rail budget. While Alok witnessed dirty trains, filthy platforms and stinking toilets here in the national capitals, things are not quite as bad, though there is always room for improvement. The focus here seems to be on security. Though the big brother is already watching here, several other security measures aren't up to the mark. I have been to Delhi 15 days back. The, uh, the luggage uh, scanner was not working. And even after 15 days, it's still not working. Part of the NDA's maiden budget is golf carts like these. Wi-Fi at select stations and trains, workstations in select trains, a thrust on e-ticketing through mobile phones, and even wake-up calls and ordering food via SMS. Safety and security should be the topmost priority, I believe. The railway minister also plans to make at least 10 railway stations as good as airports. While all this sounds nice, the important question is how and when will these be implemented? With Alok Pandey in Patna, in New Delhi, Ket Kiangre, Fendi TV. Well, we'll take a quick break, but still ahead, we're looking, still looking ahead to the budget, which is a couple of days away. The retrospective tax is probably going to go. We'll bring you more on that big story after the break.